Hello there friends and welcome! For today's updated companion Pathfinder build we have Darren, one of my favorite party members. With this build your Darren won't be able to just support your party through the super powerful and very important divine spells, but will even be able to dual wield. That's right, a dual wielding Darren. While his damage might not be the best, he will have numerous attacks per round. 4 with his offhand and 3 with the main hand, for a total of 7 rapier hits, not to mention all the attacks of opportunity. And this is where your Darren will shine. Because of his super high critical range with his rapiers and numerous attacks, every single critical hit he gets will also proc free attacks of opportunities for your nearby party members, thus highly increasing their damage. This is the main reason why I think this Darren build is simply way better than my previous one I had for him. After all, you contribute to your party not only when it comes to buffing, but also damage, instead of, you know, having to fire a crappy crossbow when not casting spells, which is rather boring. We want way more than that. This is further made possible by our trusty pet that we get as soon as level 7. Just by itself, your wolf can already handle a lot of threats, with super high armor class, which does matter because Darren will be riding his wolf, and the wolf's AC spot counts for mounted combat, both ranged and melee enemy attacks. So without further ado, let us get started on our updated dual wielding Darren build. Darren will come at level 4, and at this point we can already increase one of his stats. You have two choices. Since he starts with an odd score in constitution, you can increase it to 14 already, so he gets some extra hit points. I kinda hate odd scores. <laughs> So I'd much rather already get the scaling hit points bonus. After this, you can just increase charisma from level 8 onwards. For skill points, persuasion to me is the best. Because of his high charisma, Darren can easily make all persuasion checks in the game. The second skill to me would be use magic device. Once again, because of his high charisma, and there's plenty of nice scrolls you can get to buff Darren, especially arcane scrolls, that he wouldn't be able to cast otherwise because he's a divine spellcaster. Other skills I don't think really matter, knowledge and lore are much better left for the party members with either high intelligence or high wisdom. The same for perception. As far as Darren's spell list, He's a spontaneous character, so you have to pick what spells he learns per level. Because I already have a best divine spells guide you can check to the side here or in the video description, I'll keep this simple. For now, bow strength to buff your pets and melee allies at the early game. And Darren as an oracle will get a lot of spell slots, just limited spells known, which is different. For his first feat you can pick at level 5, I'd go for Weapon Finesse. The reality is Darren has super low strength, but quite decent dexterity, so this will help a lot increasing our AB for dual wielded attacks. I wouldn't recommend you actually melee with Darren at this point though, wait until level 7, which is when we are getting our pet so we can ride it. For another level 1 spell, Divine Favor, one of the best divine self buffs, and then the 8 spell to provide a nice layer of temporary hit points. For your first level 3 spell at level 6, Prayer, no doubt. Use it to pre-buff your allies for the multiple bonuses before battle starts. Before you progress into level 7, this is pretty important, you'll get a new revelation at this level, but the one we want to get requires Darren to acquire a new mystery, and the way to do that is through mythic progression, so be sure to level him to at least his first mythic rank before doing level 7. What you want here is second mystery and then nature. If you've watched my Angel Oracle guide videos then you know why nature is so powerful, you get a lot of super powerful revelations. The bonus spell list is also very solid. You can even change into a dragon <laughs> later on, although I wouldn't recommend that. At level 7, you'll also start getting a leftover skill point, as you'll max both persuasion and use magic device. Like I said before, you can spend this anywhere. Might as well go for something like perception or knowledge world if you want him to cook for your party. So for his level 7 normal feat, 100% outflank. Yes, it does take us a while before Darren can properly do a wield, which will be at around level 9 plus. But at this point, because we can also pick the animal companion revelation and then definitely choose wolf here, and the factual animal companion will already come at level 7, which is when it gets a size upgrade, you can ride your pet, which means Darren's wolf AC is what will count for both melee and ranged enemy attacks. That's the fun part about mounted combat. For another level 1 spell, Unbreakable Heart, and just in time for the very annoying Vescovor Swarm area, as these enemies have confusion effects. And then you might as well pick protection from alignment communal here. It can help for some random map encounters, especially against the succubus enemies, because this, when you choose the evil version, lets your characters become immune to charm and dominate. For a second level 3 spell, Archon's Aura no doubt, one of the best debuffing auras in the game. And since it is an aura surrounding Darren, 
and here we'll be fighting at melee at this part. You can easily hit all of the enemies with this, it bypasses spell resistance, offers a save, but Darren has very high charisma. For your first level 4 spell at level 8, always Crusader's Edge, you definitely want every melee character, including pets, to always have this spell. It's that good of a buff. For our level 9 feat, at last, our first two weapon fighting. So now Darren has three attacks with the main hand when you consider haste, and another with the offhand, and very soon they will achieve very high critical range. For another level 2 spell, you can kinda pick anything here. Since we are close to level 11, which is when Camellia gets the mass animal buffs, I won't bother with others like Bear's Endurance here. You might as well pick something like Fine Traps for Darren's Perception or Effortless Armor to reduce the armor check penalties since he does have low strength. And then two choices, either Animate Dead, it does fit Darren who is, you know, evil aligned, or Remove Curse, which helps spontaneous casters a lot. I think at this point Animate Dead will have more uses because at the very least you can spam some disposable meat shields for your party. And then the Death Ward spell, another amazing pick for spontaneous casters because you can cast this when needed, that is, when you're fighting undead, you don't have to bother preparing the spell slots for it before. For your first level 5 spell, always Burst of Glory, and you should always spread buff your whole party with it plus prayer as short duration buffs before battle starts. For your level 11 feat, always improve at critical and then rapier. So now we already have our outflank feat at full power and whenever we get a critical hit, it will proc free attacks from all of the nearby allies. For a revelation, if you have more than one pet, which I always do in my parties, I highly recommend you pick friend to animals here because of the massive boost to all of their saving throws based on Darren's charisma modifier and this is a permanent aura, by the way. You can pick anything else here, might as well go for effortless armor. And then, either magical vestment or remove curse. And then at this point, I'd go for freedom of movement. I don't pick it before because I often have social cast it for me instead. Darren is kinda low in level 4 spell slots because of both Death Ward and, most importantly, Crusader's Edge. For another level 5 spell, you can pick Greater Command here. If you've watched my Amber and the Fae Lord build guides, you'll know this is one of the ultimate crowd control effects in the whole game. But Darren won't get the spell penetration feats nor DC boost to enchantment. I'd rather leave this for Amber or the main character, so what I'd like to pick now is spell resistance. For your first level 6 spell, Darren already learns heal for free because of his life mystery. The same for Hellfire Ray thanks to the Red Salamander Ring. And as far as the mass animal buffs, I just have Camellia cast them for me instead. Darren won't really have enough spells known to cast them all on your party. The same for True Sin Communal. So what I would pick is Greater Dispel Magic. It's always nice to be able to dispel multiple buffs from enemy bosses. Remember you can always use this as a swift action through a quick and meta magic rod as she retain your full attacks in the same round. For our level 13 feat, improve at weapon fighting at last. So now we have two attacks with our offhand rapiers. And if you're wondering how Darren is able to get this, even if it requires higher dexterity than his starter 16, well, it's all thanks to belts that increase dexterity. And at this point, you definitely have, at the very least, a plus two belt of dexterity, which also helps Darren because it increases his attack bonus thanks to weapon finesse. And then divine power here, a big upgrade over the divine favor self buff. You might as well pick Raise Dead here, if only to put those diamonds to good use. And then for a level 6 spell, I'd say you have two choices. You can go with Inspiring Recovery, which is basically an upgrade over Breath of Life for more healing. This spell combined with Breath of Life can really reduce the situations where you would have to spend a Raise Dead spell or scroll, which are expensive because of the diamond cost. Just remember you have to cast them up to two rounds after the character has been killed. For your first level 7 spell, honestly, the divine level 7 spells are kinda garbage overall. You already get greater restoration for free, you might as well pick resurrection now. Everything else is really underwhelming. I suppose you might make a case for bestow grace of the champion, if you have a lawful good character that isn't a paladin. For level 15, our last weapon fighting feat, for the maximum 3 offhand attacks. And then as a mystery, two choices, spirit boost can add up to your oracle level as temporary hit points for your party member whenever you heal them and go over their maximum hit points amount. A good example is, let's just say our characters have maximum hit points already, you then have Darren use his channel energy, which grants, well at this point, 15 temporary hit points to everyone. Always useful because the more temporary HP you have, the higher your chances of staying alive if you get hit by the enemy. It works as another very powerful layer of defense, armor class isn't really everything there is to it. He can also go for Nature's Whisper, which lets his armor class scale based on his charisma instead of dexterity. The thing is, it's Darren's pet armor class that matters for 99% of situations, which is why I'd rather delay this. 
and he gets spirit boost now. Then anything here for another level 5 spell. Might as well pick the greater command now. The same for any other level 6 spell. If you have a lich party member, then you might as well pick harm. You can even pick Ego Sochu. It's true that evil casters, whenever they cast this, they become staggered. But to the freedom of movement buff, you become immune to that. So you can cast it at no cost, basically. Anything since level 7, cleric spells are kinda useless. Might as well pick the structure, which fits Darren thematically, even if it's useless. Also, Darren gains the ultimate summon spell in the game, Creeping Doom, because of his nature mystery. For your first level 8 spells at 16, I'd go for Frightal Aspect because of the very powerful size boost to Constitution. Also to proc shatter defenses from allies. For level 17, I'd go for Heightened Spell. Not only for spellbook flexibility, but also to heighten the Archon's Aura spell to increase the chances of it debuffing enemies. And then for another level 8 spell, you might as well pick Shield of Law to grant your party immunity to mind affecting demon spells. But at this point, depending on your mythic path, if you are let's say an angel or a lich, your characters already have immunity to those based on your mythic path abilities and spells. For your first level 9 spell, I'm not sure if this is a bug for this character, but I think you don't get to pick Mass Seal anymore because Darren already learns it at level 8. If you are still able to pick Mass Seal, then go for it. Having double Mass Seals is always fun, otherwise, Winds of Vengeance can make a nice self buff. The other spells kinda don't matter. As for your level 19 feet, I'd say you have two choices. If you want, to sneak a fit in through Lore Master, then go for Skill Focus and Knowledge World, and then pick Lore Master at level 20. I don't think it's needed though, problem is it will mess up your path scaling. Otherwise, go for either Combat Reflexes, kinda late, but we are somewhat fit start because of all of the dual wielding feats, or even Weapon Focus Rapier. For your final revelation, well, at this point you might as well pick Nature's Whisper. The other ones aren't really useful. Then Greater Angelic Aspect here. The other spells don't matter, might also go for Overwhelming Presence, because it works even if the enemy saves against it. Now for level 20, if you went with Lore Master, then pick Secret, Combat Feet and either Shatter Defenses, so Darren can hit the enemy's flat-footed AC, or Opportunist for an extra attack per round. I just think it, the reality is Darren has so many buffs, to his attack rolls, that he doesn't really need Shatter Defenses. To me, I'll keep it simple and just go with Oracle. Alright, now let's cover Mythic Progression for our dual building Darren. We already got Nature Mystery at level 1 for the pet and the Nature Revelations. For Mythic Rank 2, as usual for any full caster, extra Mythic Ability and Abundant Casting. We want as many spell slots as possible, even considering Darren already has a lot of them by virtue of being an Oracle. The more the better still, especially for buffing. Yes, I'm not going with Mythic Weapon Finesse, as I said before, Darren does not need the extra damage. The entire point is to generate free attacks by every critical hit he gets to our party members, not his self-damage. For Mythic 3, improve it Abundant Casting, as at this point you should already have level 4 and 5 spells. For Mythic Rank 4, extra Mythic Ability and Enduring spells. I do enjoy having Darren with 24 hours buffs, because of how useful the Divine buffs are, especially Crusader's Edge, Death Ward, Shield of Faith, Aid, there's a lot of them. Once again, the reason for not picking Mythic Critical is the same I've said before, Darren's damage doesn't matter. For Mythic level 5, greater Endering spells, so now he does have 24 hours for basically almost all of his buffs, besides the one round level ones. As for Mythic level 6, extra Mythic and greater Abundant casting at last. The reason is, at this point is when you finally get level 8 and 9 spells, so I don't see much of a point in picking this before. For Mythic level 7, I'd go for Ever Ready. It is kinda late, but Darren does have a lot of attacks per round and very high critical hit chance. Plus, whenever your party members proc critical hits, they'll give Darren an attack of opportunity too. While we don't pick combat reflexes, there are other ways of achieving higher than one attack of opportunity, such as the Clemency of Shadows Crusade Relic Ring. For Mythic level 8, this is when I would at last pick Mythic, Critical and Rapier. You can also go for Mythic to weapon fighting here, it's just that I think at this point Darren has more than enough bonuses to his AB from all of the buffs you have. Then at Mythic 9, Mythical Beasts to truly empower our path to the max. As far as Mythic rank 10, you can pick either Mythic to weapon fighting for A plus 2 AB to all of his attacks, or Mythic weapon finesse to add his dexterity to damage. Like I said, it doesn't matter that much, but at this point, why not? Now let's discover gear for our dual building Darren. For the amulet slot, Valexis is more for the main character, so go with amulets that increase Darren's initiative. He doesn't really need any armor, although the reality is he can equip up to medium armor without spell failure. So you can go with Mithril Chain shirts or even Mithril breastplates too, 
especially the chainmail of camaraderie for a plus 4 bonus to damage with all of his rapier attacks. But you might as well leave this to another character like the main character or Camellia. So what you can do is go for Haramaki's Divine Guidance gives a pretty big boost to his saving throws, while Deadly Rays can highly increase his Hellfire Ray AB. If you don't care about Darren's armor class, which you know doesn't matter because of the pet, you can also go for the Web Strider for a plus 2 morale to dexterity, which means higher attack bonus. And there's always its upgrade Snake Skin 2 from the Treasure of the Midnight Isles DLC for a plus 4 profane to dexterity instead. For the robes, early you can use the robe of inevitability for a plus 2 to spell penetration. There's also the robe of determination and ultimately the robe of the seven sins, but you might prefer to leave this to another caster like the main character if they are a DC focused character. But this overall is still the best robes in the game. For belts, at first belts that increase Darren's dexterity, which also help to meet the requirements for the dual wielding feats, later dexterity and constitution, and ultimately if you don't have a belt of plus 6 to all stats, just go with physical form for plus 6 to dexterity and constitution. For gloves, Fencer's Gift is usually the best for dual wielding characters, but if you prefer to leave them to another character, you can also go with Twisted Temptation, the gloves of Phlebotomy, and the gloves of Enduring Wizard too. For boots, Ronak Sacrifice is always the best for any dexterity character, but once again, you might prefer to leave them for the main character or someone else. There aren't really that many powerful boots otherwise, mostly the boots of free reign for a permanent freedom of movement effect, which can block Darren's oracle curse from staggering him at the first round of combat. But the helm slot, well obviously headbands that increase your charisma, ultimately is always beauty for a plus 6, and also all the teamwork spellcaster feats for free, mostly allied spellcaster for a huge bonus to spell penetration, as it is applied to all allies in an aura surrounding Darren, perfect because he will be at melee range, close to your other party members. There is always darkness caress too for the ultimate charisma bonus. For glasses, 100% the goggles of piercing gaze, mostly for the huge bonus to persuasion, but the stacking inside bonus to attack and damage against demons helps Darren too. For cloaks, mostly cloaks of resistance with the highest value possible. But earlier, you can also go for the Scarlet Allure Cloak. It doesn't have that much bonus to saving throws, only plus 3, but grants you a plus 5 morale to persuasion. And a decent effect if the enemy hits you with an attack of opportunity or a sneak attack. Critical hits too, although the DC isn't that high. For the ring slot, Red Salamander is always amazing for spontaneous casters, as it basically gives you the best fire spells in the game, including ones that Darren wouldn't get, like the Fiery Body, for immunity to critical hits and sneak attacks, even ability damage too. Hellfire Ray for free is always great, but some other fire spells such as Controlled Fireball for example, can easily help Darren hit pesky swarms at the mid game. Besides that, the Ring of Evasion can always help negate enemies area of effect spells. For the Braces slot, two choices, Braces of Armor, if you want Darren to have high armor class, although our Wolf's AC is the one that really matters. And if you want even more offhand damage, there's always the braces of the heavy hand. Now at last let us cover weapons and quick slots. For weapons, we are of course going with rapiers, Darren's background already gives him rapier proficiency, and they are one of the best one-handed weapons in the game because of their huge critical range. Also, since they are Camellia's favorite weapon, you can find some pretty good enchanted ones too, and yes, there will be enough rapiers for both Darren and Camellia, I usually have them on the same party. The best ones, well, I already have a guide for them that you can check to the side here, where I cover the full rapier progression, also in the video description, but to put it simply, the translucent needle of astonishment and the interceptor rapier. Earlier you have the holy rapier too. And remember, through the aid of the greater magic weapon spell, you can increase even lowly enchanted rapiers up to plus 5, which is the maximum. Now if you find the penalty to AB too high at the early levels, you can also dual wield daggers or short swords, because they have a lower penalty. A good example is the Hasty Eradicator, because it adds a massive amount of attacks, an extra two to your offhand. The only downside is of course, the critical range won't be good since we aren't getting proved critical into daggers. As far as quick slots, the Devouring Lust Meta Magic Rod is amazing for any damage focused spellcaster, mostly for Darren's fire spells, granted by the Red Salamander Ring. Also do note this will convert the spell damage into unholy, which lets us bypass enemies' immunity to fire damage, which is why I don't pick, for example, Ascended Element with this Darren. We can just convert the damage of Controlled Fireball or Hellfire Ray fully into unholy. Grandmaster's Rod, of course, is always amazing for even higher spell damage, a greater quick and meta magic rod. Quick and mass heals can really save lives on Unfair. The old Grimoire is 
optional, but it can grant Darren even more spell slots for 1, 2 and 3 buffs, and Divine Casters have some pretty nice spells at these levels. Lastly, as usual, the Signet of House of Pratilio, if you want to increase a skill, most likely going to be Persuasion, although you can also leave this to another character. If you have the Treasure of the Midnight Isles DLC, you have plenty of other greater rods you can pick for more spell damage and other powerful effects. Well, alright, so this was it for my updated dual wielding Darren guide. If you found it useful, please remember to like, subscribe, and even consider becoming a channel member. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends, with even more updated companion and other fun builds for Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous.